Okay, this is a video about the Pajero ABS slash uh, brake booster pump. It's called a hydraulic brake booster pump. There's no vacuum assist. There's hydraulic assist. And as far as I'm aware, it was used from the Gen 3, around about 2005 to 2006. This is a Gen 4 Pajero, early Gen 4 Pajero. Um, the Gen 3 Pajeros that had traction control. There's an easy way to tell. If you look at the spotlights, not the spotlights, the fog lights of the Gen 3 Pajero. If they are trapezoidal, that's the early Gen 3, they did not have this specific one. And this is a spare unit, the main unit sits over here. Um, and I believe they had round black hydraulic brake boosters. This is the accumulator, we'll get to that in a minute. And then the later Gen 3s um, had rounder bumpers, but then they also had the round fog lights down at the bottom. And at the back, the early Gen 3s, the back lights had almost like a plastic, almost like a framework for the back lights. And then the later Gen 3s with the traction control had similar to the Gen 4s, it was just a, a flat plastic for the back brake lights. So with a failure, um, of the ABS units. There's quite a few failures. Generally it's the hydraulic brake booster that fails. Now I've got the spare here. This is the one that failed and I've, I've put a second hand unit in here which is working. Um, I've got this one here just to give a better indication. Basically what this is is um, let me just turn this over here. You'll see at the bottom, that's an electric motor over there. And that pumps brake fluid from the reservoir into this accumulator. And um, it starts from about here, and there's basically a piston over here. And then on top there's nitrogen filled, just nitrogen, just, it's air, it's a inert gas. And it'll pump brake fluid into this cavity over here, and in that process it pumps the piston up in here, which basically increases the pressure of the nitrogen air here. So if you have a failure of the engine, that type of thing, and you press the brake pedal, mechanically you will still have that pressure helping the brakes. You have about anywhere between 10 to about 30 pumps of the brake to help you stop the car if you have a failure of the engine, that type of thing. There's no vacuum assist. Uh, the electric motor pumps it. And that, that's your assist. It's a hydraulic brake booster, so it's a hydraulic assist. Um, so generally the failure, on my model over here, you have two relays. And as I could be corrected, um, if you want to correct me, just post in the comment section. I'll try and update the description as we go along. Um, I'm not the, the all-in expert on these things, but as far as I could figure out, these two relays are redundant relays. So if you pull the one, the other one will still work. If you pull the other one, it will still work. Um, but they work together to basically take the load off the relay so you don't have too much amps going through the relays. And um, that comes from the ECU, which is in the footwell, under the radio, on the other side of the firewall. Uh, that's where the ECU is that controls all these things, even though there is a built-in type of control board over here on the side of the pump as well. But... Um, yeah, so the ECU will send a signal to these relays and that will send power to the electric motor which is underneath, which I've shown earlier before. That's that electric motor over here. So the failure could be one of a few things. These relays could get stuck, then the pump, the electric pump, stays in the on position and basically overpressurizes this. Now there is uh, a mechanical overpressure release and um, that's the noise that you would sometimes hear and it'll go eh, 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 after you start the, well if the ignition is on even if the ignition's on and you haven't started the car it will still run and still make that noise you will have a beeping from the dash and the lights will come on um, so there is a mechanical easy test for that is if you if you then pump the brakes the noise will go away and then the pump will keep running and the noise will come back eh, eh, eh. And basically the overpressure sensor um, it's either overpressure sensor or algorithm 
in the car's issue that picks up the pump is running more than it should be. So, um, yeah, but a very good indication of that is the lights on the dash, that type of thing. The second failure could be that the accumulator itself has failed and um, the gas has leaked past or has leaked out the top here or that type of thing. And um, it goes all the way up and then the, the time difference in the algorithm of the issue doesn't see the pressure climbing as it should. And um, the pump then keeps pumping because it's not uh, in the time frame it should be. It's not in the map of the ECU. And you also get that same noise. Um, some of the other failures is you have a hard brake pedal. Now, if you have a hard brake pedal, it's generally not this fault. And it's not the accumulator's fault. The electric motor underneath has failed. Um, it is a brush motor. So the brushes do tend to give off dust and sometimes the brushes wear out, especially with high mileage engines, that could be the failure. So if you have a brake problem in your car, either with a hard brake pedal or you have the lights on the dash with a buzzer, first things to do is check your brake fluid. If you have brake fluid in the reservoir, you have no leaks, check all the corners at the brakes, there's no leaks, that type of thing. Check the relays. They're not too expensive. Replace them straight away. It is a scarce type of relay. They look like that. Um, you do get them from Toyota as well, but they have like a little... If you turn them around with the plugs facing you, in the middle there's like a little nipple that you can break off. It sometimes is cheaper if you get them from Toyota. If that fails, see if you can find a mate. These accumulators are quite common. Swap out the accumulator and see if the problem persists. If the problem, pers if you can, switch ignition on and listen for the pump uh, to go on. If the pump goes on and it stays on and never quits, um, then it's probably a relay issue. But if the pump's making a funny noise, or sometimes if you just tap the pump at the bottom and it kicks in, then you know the pump's seen better days. You can sw just... Um, Send it in to, to recondition the pump or change out the pump or change the brushes. Um, not the pump, the motor. Um, but yeah, the, the failure on mine, um, I checked the relays, I swapped out the reservoir. There's also a pressure sensor down here, that one over there. I swapped that out and the problem persisted. Now, I've, as far as I can gather, this sensor over here picks up the pressure that you put on the brake pedal. So the more pressure you put on the brake pedal, I think there's a pulse width modulated uh, piston on the inside of the valve body that will dictate how much of this pressure gets fed through to the braking system. So, um, but on mine, uh, I have a MUT3 tool and going through all of this, I eventually put the scanner on it and it had a two faults. One of the faults was uh, the overpressure and the other fault was a low pressure sensor fault. So I suspect with mine there is a low pressure sensor inside the valve body as part of this uh, electronic board over here. And the low pressure sensor was picking up that there's not enough pressure in the system. So the ECU then continuously demanded for the pump to pump and after replacing the relays, which wasn't the issue, the pump kept pumping and the mechanical uh, bypass kept making the noise. And I suspect there's an overpressure sensor or the algorithm picked up that the pump's running longer than it should be. So I had the eh, 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 mechanical noise of the overpressure bypass and then all the lights on the dash came on with the beep. Um, so I had to change the whole thing, even because um, I tried to replace an accumulator and a sensor with a vehicle that I knew that was good, made no difference. Uh, tested the relays, but replaced them anyway, made no difference. So I had to get a second hand unit and swap that out, and that sorted the issue for me. There's no coding necessary, it was a straight swap. So, um, yeah, and for me, once I swapped it out, in terms of bleeding it, um, I didn't have enough brake fluid and I live in a very remote area. So what I did is I changed the unit and then I left that one and that one, that one and that one. I left them cracked and then I asked my wife to basically switch ignition on um, and pump the pedal, the pedal, the brake pedal. And once there was no air bubbles coming out of these ports, 
uh, I tighten them up and topped up the reservoir and it was and the brake pedal feels it the same way it's ever felt so yeah I hope um, I think I covered everything um, if you have any questions drop it in the comments uh, if you like the video subscribe drop it a like that's my spare I just keep it wrapped up as I'm curious at some stage I'll take this off, maybe make a video about that. Um, but I'm keeping this as a spare because I know the sensor is good and I, I know the accumulator is good. So I'm keeping it sealed as spares. Probably, you know, and you know what it's like. If you do that, you will never need those spares. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping it as spares. Um, don't mind the lack of engine cover. I like to know what's going on in the engine. So I've taken the engine cover off. Uh, just out of a matter of interest, I've completely deleted the EGR cooler with a pipe over here and the EGR. It's not a law in our country, so I can get away with that. Less to fail. Um, so yeah, drop a like, subscribe for more videos. And uh, just to top the video off, we'll finish it with a nice sunset. What's better than a good Pajero with a nice sunset?